अन्नपारी जाताया स्त्रोत्रो वेचक पानी दान मुद्राय कृष्णाय गीतामृत वंदे नम हरे कृष्णा सो लाइक ऑल ऑफ यू फॉर टुडे सेशन वी आर कंटिन्यूइंग विद आवर स्टडी ऑफ भगवद गीता वी आर इन द चैप्टर्स बिटवीन 7 टू 12 द भक्ति योग सेक्शन एंड करेंटली इन द चैप्टर 8 अटेनिंग द सुप्रीम अक्षर ब्रह्म योग और तारक ब्रह्म योग uh <clears throat> we continue with our discussion so may i request um chandra bhushan tiwari prabhu so can you help me with the overview of the chapter 8 can you audible prabhu मृदुल कृष्ण प्लीज so uh, in this chapter uh, first two question uh, where arjuna uh, sorry first two so lokas krishna and chandrabhushan prabhu prabhu you can uh, mute yourself because i think your signal is is not issue so our brother krishna prabhu is saying it yes so first two lokas um, um, arjuna had asked the questions then th- prabhu you are muted sorry uh, so the first two slokas uh, um, arjuna asked the questions and uh, then uh, third and fourth slok uh, shloka uh, krishna gave the answer to first six, uh, six questions uh, then uh, five to eight um, uh, krishna uh, gave the answer for, of seventh question uh, that was related to the remembrance of the lord at the time of death yes uh, then 9 to 13 is uh, remembrance of krishna by yoga mishra bhakta and then 1415 is a remembrance by shuddha bhakta yes. uh, then 16 to 22 is remembrance of the supreme lord by comparing material uh, comparing nature of material and spiritual world and the last section 23 uh, to 28 is remembrance by bhakti yoga is the easier than ashtang yoga yes sir thank you so much hare krishna so gautam prabhu can you say where are we currently In which section are we? Aradhan Prabhu, in which section are we currently? Hare Krishna Prabhu, I am not able. Yeah. So currently we are in section number eight point fourteen to fifteen. Remembrance by Shuddha Bhakta. Fine. So last week uh, we have seen that mm-hmm. the Yoga Mishra Bhakti part, and then we saw that how to how the what do you call Shuddha Bhaktas mm-hmm. how they remember the Supreme Lord. Mm-hmm. There is uh, what do you call Satatam and Nitya. These two words are used. Ananya Bhakta. So that verse we saw. And today we will continue with that verse number. Fifteen on. So, so last week we saw this. Hopefully, all of you are able to see the screen. Ananya cheta sattam yomam smarati nitya saha tasyaham sulabha parta nitya tasya yogina. We saw that this ananya cheta. They in their consciousness there is nothing but only smarati. They remember Krishna always. Uh, daily, constantly, both is there, mm-hmm. and thus I am very easy. Solabha parta. This here very easily I am attaining. This is nitya yukta siyogina, and the desire to uh, or have uh, attain me that and continue to remember. So that's what. And last week we saw about that. So one more verse related to that. It is related to. the destination part 
मामुपेज्या पुनर्जन्म दुखालय शाश्वतम नाप्नुवंति महात्मा संसिधि परमाम गता टेनिंग the supreme lord's abode or the supreme lord in that sense hmm? then what happens then the result is this punarjanma dukhalayam they don't have punarjanma then uh, where is punarjanma punarjanma is in this world hmm? in this material world uh, where there is this thing what we call dukhalayam shashvatam hmm? that will not happen to this mahatma so attained samsiddhim paramam gatim Who have reached the supreme lord? That will not happen to them. So this is the flow of the previous verse. This will not happen to the uh, the ananya cheta bhaktas, the shuddha bhaktas. That's what it has been mentioned. Okay. Please continue to read, Guru. Yes, Guru. Since this temporary material world is full of the miseries of birth, old age, disease, and death, naturally he who achieves the highest perfection. And attains the supreme planet Krishna Loka, Golok Vrindavan, does not wish to return. The supreme planet is described in Vedic literature as Abhyakta and Akshara and Paramagati. In other words, that planet is beyond our material vision, and it is inexplicable. But it is the highest goal, the destination for the Mahatmas, great souls. Yeah, this word Mahat- like. These words like the supreme planet. You have here you are seeing Parama Gati, but you will find in the coming verses that abode is called as also Akshara, or that abode is always called as Avyakta. Avyakta is unmanifest to this material world. It is manifest in the spiritual world, but unmanifest to it. So these words are also used to the uh, what do you call? Uh, that's why there is the chapter name is also Akshara Brahma Yoga, or there is Taraka. Ah, uh, what do you call Daraka, ah, uh, Brahma Yoga. Like that, two two names are there for this chapter. One who attains that kati. That's why Prabhupada writes, "What is the attaining the supreme?" Is the ah, uh, what do you call title of this uh, chapter? This is the this is the ultimate because after remembrance, where we go in the chapter, if you say the flow is maximum, it's remembrance, 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 remembrance by this, remembrance by that, remembrance by this. So finally, what is the attainment of after remembrance? Go into this. That is Paramam, Paramam, Katim, or Akshar Brahma. Akshar Brahma is not that Brahman. Ah, uh, Akshar Brahma is that the supreme abode of the Lord, which is unmanifest. That alone only, Avyakta, which is unmanifest. So that is that sort of thing. So that will be ah uh, what do you call explained in further verses also. Yes, Guru. So they are these Mahatmas. Maha is great. Atmas is souls, Mahatma. That's why the word Mahatma. Yes, yes, Lord. The Mahatmas receive transcendental messages from the realized devotees, and thus gradually develop devotional service and Krishna consciousness, and become so absorbed in transcendental service that they no longer desire elevation to any of the material planets, nor do they even want to be transferred to any spiritual planet. They want only Krishna. And Krishna's association and nothing else. Ah, this is more exclusive. Yeah, exclusive. Yes. Okay. This is the har. This is the highest perfection of life. This verse specifically mentions the personalist devotees of Supreme Lord Krishna. Like this mention, these devotees in Krishna consciousness achieve the highest perfection life. In other words, they are supreme souls. Okay. This verse talks about that. Now, sixteen to onwards, the verses will contrast uh, between. The comparison of the material um, world and spiritual worlds will be compared. Hmm? So, because now in the sixteenth verse, two words are used. If you see here, 
Maam Upetya is the words. So, Maam Upetya, that abode of the Lord, spiritual world, that will be described in the coming verses in 20, 21 and 22. Now, 16th verse onwards till around uh, 19, 16 to 19, this Punar Janma aspect, Dukha Laim aspect, uh, this Ashashwat aspect of this material world will be spoken. From 16 through 19, this Dukha Laim, temporariness of the material world will be spoken. And then later, 2021 20, and 22, this is that uh, Paramam or going to the Supreme Lord's planet. That is, that's how the contrast between the, uh, what you call, temperateness of the material world and the spiritual world is compared. One should remember that this place is, why did that, why that, six, now we are entering into the section 16 to 22. So this remembrance of the Supreme Lord by comparing natures of the material and spiritual world is basically remembering him, hmm, understanding that this place is temporary and my actual purpose is to leave this place and go to the permanent eternal place of the Lord. That is Avyatta, that is Akshara, that is Paramapati. Whereas this place is Dukhalaya, this is Punarjanma, rebirth aspect is there in this material world. So that thing has been uh, spoken. You will find that one more verse, 16 onwards through the show. Uh, now he will say, Avrahma Bhuvana Lokaha Punaravarti Novanjuna Mamu Betya to Kaunte, ya, Punarjan Mana Vidyate. He is contrasting both here. Okay. Now, my first uh, Asim Prabha Prabhu. Translation From the highest planet in the material world down to the lowest, all are places of misery, wherein repeated birth and death takes place. But one who attains to my abode, O son of Kunti, never takes birth again. Yeah. So, quick contrast between both is there about this material existence and the spiritual world. Yes. Arjuna is saying, Oh, Arjuna, up to the point of Brahma Loka. Ah, Brahma Bhavana Loka means up to the point of Brahma Loka. There is means all the planets up to the point of because Brahma Loka is the highest um, in the universal system resource. Is also called as Satya Loka, Brahma Loka. Till that point, say so till that point means below that all the uh, places, all the planetary systems or all the places of residence, there is Punaravartina. That means there is coming back. But again, O Kaunteya, he again says, O son of Kunti. But to, his word is used. But Mamupetya, if you come to me, Punarjanmana Vidyate. Will not have Punarjanma. It's very clear contrast. Two lines it's talking about very clear. Till the Brahma Loka, if somebody just so, uh, keeps on going with pious activities, with the other processes, till the Brahma Loka, there is always a chance of coming. But there is no chance of coming. He is continuing with that flow. No coming back. That you know off of sure. Punarjanma. Clear. Okay. Please continue. Yes, sir. As the Persians on earth are elevated to higher planets, people on higher planets such as Brahma Loka, Chandra Loka and Indra Loka fall down <coughs> to earth. The practice of sacrifice called Panchagni Vidya recommended in the Chandokya Upanishad enables one to achieve Brahma Loka. But if on Brahma Loka one does not cultivate Krishna consciousness, then he must return to earth. Those who progress in Krishna consciousness on the higher planet are gradually elevated to higher and higher planets and at the time of universal devastation are transferred to <coughs> devastation are transferred to the eternal spiritual kingdom. So this this those who progress in Krishna consciousness on the higher planets are gradually elevated to the uh, higher and higher planets, the planet. Basically, uh, what do you call it? One thing is, there is a, what do you call it? Mm. Uh, there are some, uh, some uh, personalities who can progress, like the Karmakandis, they will progress to the Swarga and they will, uh, what do you call it? Enjoy their uh, Punya and then return back. Some of them may return back. And higher planetary structure is like uh, Maharloka, Janaloka, Tapaloka, different categories of uh, 
higher elevated souls are there till that point. And after that also they continue to practice Krishna consciousness. From there, from the Brahma Loka, when Brahma's life is ended, from there they will go to the spiritual world. And But if they are not uh, practiced or not attained that perfection, they will come back to this material world in their next cycle of uh, or next day of Brahma. So that will be there. So here, here Baldevidya Bhushan also in his commentary on Bhagavad Gita quotes, this was from Kurma Purana 1, 11 He is saying that Brahmana sate sarve samprapte prati sanchare parasyante kritatmanaha pravishyanti paramam param. When there is devastation of this material universe, Brahma and the devotees, hmm, those are the devotees who are constantly engaged in Krishna consciousness are all transferred to the spiritual universe and to specific spiritual planets according to their desires. So, it, it accordingly, so this is the reference given to Brahma. This, uh, accordingly, those who are well qualified, they will also pass. But if 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 they are not up to the mark, what to speak of them? If Brahma, current Brahma is a Vaishnava, but in the scriptures it is mentioned that some Brahmas are not Vaishnavas. They, they have that aspect of creation, they are empowered. And but accordingly, if they are not qualified, then Brahma may come down also. Yeah, like that. So it's not that always every Brahma will go back. No, no, it's not that every Brahma. Yeah. Only those Brahmas who are qualified um, after their end of their uh, life, that is 100 years, not 100 years compared to our 100 years, but according to Brahma's 100 years. What is that? That is also going to come. So he will, he will go and all those who are in the, in the Brahma Loka, who are qualified, they will also make to the spiritual world as per their desires. That is what I mentioned. So this verse is very clear. Now, you will find 17, 18 and 19, it will more speak about the temporariness of this world and the Brahma's day, that aspect has been spoken. From here, we come to know that uh, clear aspects of what is Yuga, what is Brahma's one day, what is Brahma's one night, all that aspects. <laughs> and showing the birth and destruction of the living entities under the control of karma. So these aspects will be spoken to us. Sahasraiva Paryantam Ahriyat Brahmano Viduhu Ratrim Yuga Sahasrantam Deho Ratra Vido Jana. May request to take some breath. Uh, is there Aman Prabhu? Aman Kumar Prabhu? Are you there? Hare Krishna Prabhu. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Translation. By human calculation, a thousand ages taken together form the duration of Brahma's one day. And such also is the duration of his night. Aha. Aha. Or aha. Here, aha. 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 Means the day. day. So, Brahman. The Brahmanas. The knowers of the Vedas, they, they know it very clearly. They say that this Brahma's Sahasra Yoga Pariyam. One day of Parama is uh, what you call is thousand cycles of thousand yoga cycles has been uh, the understanding is this thousand yoga cycles of which is called as one kalpa also will will make one day of Brahma. Means what? There will be Satya Yuga. Treta Yuga, Dwapar Yuga and Kali Yuga. That cycle will go for 1000 and that will make 12 hours of Brahma. Same. Ratrim Yuga Sahasrantam. Similarly, that 1000 cycles also 12 hours relatively will be what you call Ratra Vidhojan. That will also will be the night. That is the understanding. Please continue to read. Purport. The duration of material universe is limited. It is manifested in cycles of kalpas. A kalpa is a day of Brahma and one day of Brahma consists of a thousand cycles of four yugas or ages. Satya, Treta, Dwapara and Kali. Yeah, so all of you might uh, always we use and many of us know this, we have heard it. But we should know from where it is coming. It is coming from here further verses also from us. And Prabhupada goes on to explain the 
characteristic of each yuga satyuga it characteristic how virtue wisdom and at the same time what is the time period of that yuga similarly with treta similarly with dwapar similarly like that he will continue to explain it so that is the and here he comes in the kali yuga wise increases to such a point this is not the w i s c this is v i c e v i c e is what they call ill religion in that sense or uh, those who don't follow dharma all that aspects increases to such a point that at the termination of the yuga the supreme lord himself appears as the kalki avatar then vanishes the demons saves his devotees and commences another satyuga then the process is set rolling again so that's how the cycle starts every time every time there will be cycle okay please continue these four yugas rotating a thousand times comprise one day of brahma and the same number comprise one night brahma lives 100 of such years and then dies these 100 years by earth calculations total of 311 trillion and 40 billion earth years by these calculations the life of brahma seems fantastic and interminable but from the viewpoint of eternity it is as brief as a lightning flash yeah what is ash light compare because for the ant our life may appear like thousands of years because its life is very small then what to speak of those living entities who flash uh, though they take birth in the night if you have seen some of the flies uh, they take birth in the night their whole cycle of uh, like we have our cycle of birth growth and uh, what do you call it? manhood and then producing uh, by product or having children and all that and then slowly getting old age dwindling and death all that six transformations of a body that happens uh, on a relative scale for some living entities in the matter of 6 hours in the matter of 12 hours overnight they have all these things what we have in a period of so every living entity in that sense if we compare to see the other living entity one may feel that the ant may feel our life as oh such a huge big life they are going to live similarly is our is our is our thought about brahma hmm? But when it comes to the higher scale, you know, when it comes from Mahavishnu's point of view, oh, it is practically one swasa, <laughs> practically one swasa. In one breath, everything happens. It is like beyond our conception. In one swas, all these things are happening. The life of Brahma, he takes birth. All the creation is happening. His hundred lives are taken, and he is going back into him. So this is amazing. Yeah, he had a proper right. So, see, in the causal ocean, there are innumerable Brahmas rising and disappearing like bubbles in the Atlantic. Brahma and his creation are all parts of material universe, and therefore, they are in a constant flux, constant means constant changing. There is yuga cycles changing. There is Brahma's creation coming, going, coming, going. Yeah. So that's that is with respect to that. Next, eighteen. Avyakta vyaktaya sarva. आगमे आगमे प्रलीयन्ते ओके ओके at the beginning of brahmaste all living entities become manifest from the unmanifest state and thereafter when the night falls they are merged into the unmanifest again very clear you see this word avyakta is unmanifest it is not related to unmanifest of uh, this material world this unmanifest means the material world what um, when brahma takes rest that is that is the state of avyakta vyakta is when brahma is awake 12 hours of brahma when he is awake that is spoken here as vyakta and uh, avyakta is referring to the uh, his sleep time so that has to be considered mm. everywhere the avyakta will not take same meaning throughout again one more avyakta will uh, again in the coming verses you will find uh, he will say avyakta of the avyakta again he will use uh, two avyaktas two unmanifested states will 
So one will refer to Brahma as sleep, and another will be reference to beyond this material existence. That is going to come. So words has carry according to the context, context their meaning. So that has to be searched. One should not froze the words meaning uh, having only one particular meaning. Yeah. So it says that when Brahma's day, Ahar Agami, when Brahma's day is coming, then what will happen? This Prabhavanti, Sarvaha, and all the living entities, they come into existence. Why? Because yes, Brahma has to provide the bodies according to their karma, uh, the place for their enjoyment, according to the karmas, according to their this thing. That has been provided by the uh, by Brahma, seeing their past uh, whole thing. He knows because he is the one. He is having that uh, creation power of creation is handed over to him by the Lord. So he he does that. Uh, similarly, when the night time, Ratri Agame, uh, when the night time comes, then there will be annihilation, and then everything goes completely merges. Tatreva. So here there is no uh, translation. It's very clear. All entities become manifest from the anime. So this from the in the translation you will not find from the unmanifest. So one may get bewildered. What is that unmanifest? Unmanifest nothing but the from the night time. From the um, when the uh, Brahma's day begins. That means it's an Herculean task for Brahma that every day he has to uh, what do you call recreate the universe as is as it takes rest there is dissolution in the three primary systems and when he wakes up and then uh, again he has the task of uh, doing all this process of creation it's daily daily for brahma and similarly therefore when the night falls they are merged into the unmanifest again it means into the brahma that's what is being said text 19 Last verse related to temporariness. Basically, in these verses, you will find that temporariness aspect of the world is being spoken. Bhuta grama sa evayam bhutva bhutva praliyate ratriagame avasa partha prabhavanti aharagame. Same thing, more or less. Yeah, Aniruddha Guru. Translation again and again. When Brahma's day, Brahma's day arrives, all living entities come into being and with the arrival of Brahma's night, they are helplessly annihilated. So here it's very clear. Bhutva, bhutva, again and again, these living entities, uh, what do you call, all the living entities, uh, when the night comes, everything goes into annihilation. When the day comes, uh, our agami, then everybody, everything comes into existence. What? According to our Shaha. Prabhupada writes as automatically. This automatically nothing but karma. According to one's karma. Our Shaha. According to one's karma. He is saying, O Arjuna, O Partha. Uh, at the beginning of the night, there is uh, annihilation. At the beginning of the day, Ahar Agame, there is what do you call? Uh, come, uh, the living entities come into uh, existence and take their according to their place for enjoyment bodies accordingly and this keep on happening Bhutva, Bhutva, again and again repeated birth and repeated death that is being explained please continue Guru. during the daytime of Brahma they can exhibit their activities on higher and lower planets within this material world but at the coming of Brahma's night they are they are all annihilated. In the day, they receive various bodies for material activities. And at night, they no longer have bodies but remain compact in the body of Vishnu. Then again, they are manifest at the arrival of Brahma's day. Bhutva, 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 uh, BG 8.19 During the day, they become manifest. And at night, they are annihilated again. Yeah. Ultimately, when Brahma's life is finished, they are annihilated and remain unmanifest for millions and millions of years. Again, this is a much more deeper situation. And when Brahma is born, another... yes. See here. 
for those who are intelligent that is for unintelligent profile starts with that but those who are intelligent person who take to krishna consciousness use the human life fully in the devotional service of the lord chanting hare krishna hare krishna 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 hare 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 ram hare ram 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 thus they transfer themselves even in this life to the spiritual planet of krishna and become eternally blissful there not been subjected to such repeated rebirths that has been told here so this ends about the temporary aspect now 20 21 22 uh, quite interesting you will find that spiritual aspect will be brought or the spiritual nature of uh, spiritual world will be hmm. paras tasmas bhavanyo व्यक्तो व्यक्ता सनातना या स सर्वेशु भूतेशु नश्यत्सु न विनश्यति सौम्य सौरोप ट्रांसलेशन हियर देर इज अनदर अनमेनिफेस्ट नेचर विच इज इटरनल एंड इज ट्रांसिडेंटल टू दी मेनिफेस्टेड एंड अनमेनिफेस्टेड मैटर इट इज सुप्रीम एंड इज नेवर एनहिलेटेड एंड ऑल in this world is annihilated that part remains as it is yeah so it's very clear it is referring to the spiritual world paras tasma till now there is uh, what you call whatever has been spoken about uh, from the material world in which brahma's day is spoken brahma's night is spoken there is a rebirth in the day time there is annihilation in the night time taking away of the bodies in the night giving up giving the bodies in the day uh, but beyond this uh, there is another bhavanya there is another nature or another world that's an, another existence that is a meaning bhavanya uh, this is when the comma is there here a uh, is used that's why here also avyakta avyakta you will find this <laughs> and here you will not find vyakta it there is a uh, will be used so a uh, will be used so you will find this this is what i was saying unmanifest unmanifest to the unmanifest how do you make it unmanifest to the unmanifest <laughs> so it means the one unmanifest is referring to that brahma ji is night or you can refer to both manifest and unmanifest in this world there is another unmanifest which is not visible to us that is and that is sanatan that that unmanifest is remains eternally whereas this any this unmanifest may manifest <laughs> that is a difference i repeat there are two avyakta 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 referring here this avyakta sanatana is referring to the spiritual aspect the spiritual world that's why he's saying there is another nature and this avyakta is referring to brahma ji's day and night huh? manifestation of day and, and night because it is referring to the previous verse previous verse had that aspect of avyakta so that is going from there straight yah sa sarve bhuteshu nashyat supna vinashyati because once uh, what do you call uh, when all in this world is annihilated that part remains so, so this is referring to this avyakta sana so that part when everything is uh, vinashyati that does not have any uh vinashyati uh, so that that what it is been mentioned so there is another unmanifest now let me see this unmanifest is referring to what anyone spiritual world good this manifested and unmanifest is referring to what कृष्णा सुपीरियर स्पिरिचुअल एनर्जी इज ट्रांसिडेंटल एंड इटर्नल 
it is beyond all the changes of material nature which is manifest and annihilated during the days and nights of brahma krishna's superior energy is completely opposite in quality to material nature superior and inferior nature are explained in the seventh chapter so you have already seen can anybody say how their krishna superior energy is completely opposite in quality to the material nature just raise the hands now huh? before anyone how krishna's nature is been and that has been already explained in sense krishna's superior energy is completely opposite in quality to material nature yeah deepak sutar uh, shri krishna's superior energy is conscious but like material nature is unconscious very good that is an opposite nature very good is there any other point Oh, sorry. Sumit Kumar, yes, sir. So, ji, ah, uh, Krishna's superior energy is ah uh, inter uh, internal energy. Yes. And this material world is this material and uh, world is actually external energy. Hmm. That's why internal energy is superior than external energy. Exactly. Very good. And uh, second thing is. how it is opposite because in this material world there is a birth old age disease and death but exactly. there in spiritual world there is nothing there is nothing <laughs> there is no birth there is no death don't say nothing nothing is <laughs> better to use the word there is no birth there is no death no old age no disease yes good and your eyes so then who are we then yeah so with who are we then which energy we are, are we? we are marginal right now because we are in conditional state right actually. now we are marginal or eternally actually we are marginal uh right now we are in marginal because we are in condition this in this body but we comes actually in the internal energy only eternally we are what marginal eternally we are eternally uh <laughs> we are internal project i think we are eternal then what are you doing here internal We are internal, but what are you doing here? All other internal personalities are there. So that. Uh, think about it. Put for thought for you for the day. Uh, yes, yes Shantanu. Apruji, we are eternally marginal, marginal energy. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah, and we have a choice whether to remain in the internal energy or the external energy. Yeah, and but where is which is more suitable for us? Uh, superior energy is more suitable because that's our natural uh, propensity. Yeah, 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 because because yes, so that is good good answer. We are eternal. Krishna has superior energy, lower energy, and but that's how completeness of the Lord. He has the margin. We are eternally marginal, but yes, because we are marginal, we have very in uh, very small. Uh, uh, we are susceptible by either of the energies. That's why, but our natural position is more compatible with the internal, because we are conscious living entity, as already been previously mentioned before. So whereas we, our compatibility with the unconscious matter is, is it's 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 causes us suffering. It causes us, but with the uh, internal energy, it's 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 our harmonizes with that. So that's how it's very important. Good. So <clears throat> fine. So that is twenty one. ಅವ್ಯಕ್ತೋಕ್ಷರೈತಿಯುಕ್ತಸ್ತಮಾಪರಮಂಬಮಸ್ಕಮಿಂಗ್ that which the vedantist describe as unmanifested and infallible that which is known as the supreme destination that place from which having attained it one never returns mm -hmm. that is my supreme abode yes so this is yeah. here avyakta represent refers to what anyone spiritual world exactly yes, sir so these are the words i told that time and if you come in the previous verses around or around uh, around in the verse number 16 if you have seen that i said sorry yeah 
This is this is the words. See, the supreme planet is described in the Vedic terms: Avyakta, Akshara, Paramam Gatim. You know that which is beyond our explicit words. Where the Mahatma spoke. Same thing. These are words are not there exactly in this fifteenth verse. If you see, only Paramam Gatim is there. But Avyakta, Akshara, Akshara is infallible. Avyakta is unmanifest, hmm? and Paramam Gatim. So these words are coming. This words. It's very good. Krishna is referring to that. So, 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 yeah. So this avyakta, akshara, hmm? tam ahu, hmm? then paramangati. One who receives that, nivartante, tad dhama paramangama. Hmm? Lord or his dham in one sense is not different because paramangati, hmm? one who achieves that, doesn't nivartante, doesn't come back. Hmm? That is being told. Hmm? Okay. Yes, Prabhu, continue. In the Bhagavad Gita, Lord Krishna gives only a small hint of his personal abode, Golok Vrindavan, which is the su supermost planet in the spiritual kingdom. A vivid description is given in the Brahma Samhita. Vedic literature, Katha Upanishad 1.3.11 states that there is nothing superior to the Mm, uh, abode of Supreme God and that the abode is ultimate destination. Purushan na param kinchit sa kashtha sa paragat sa sa paragati. When one attains to it, he never returns to the material world. Krishna's uh, supreme abode and Krishna himself are not different, being of uh, of the same quality. Yeah, being of the same quality. On this earth. Uh, no, no. Yeah, so you find this Prabhupada starts with Brahma Samhita. He just expands the verse of Chinta Mantra. That's what just description. And if you all uh, read um, Bhagavad, uh, Brahma Samhita, beautiful verses. If you read that eternally, um, the Lord's uh, abode has been described. Shriya, Kanta, Kanta, Parama, Purusha, Kalpa, Karavo, like that. That whole last, uh, I think, last. Uh, verses last two verses very beautifully speak about specifically about Golokrishna. You find how there is you know, the time doesn't flow there. Uh, it is present, but it is as good as not not present. Uh, then there is what you call the cows. Ozadas are filled with milk. There is all this wonderful description of the exact Golokrishna itself is there and the. Uh, Ending of the Brahma Samhita, this chapter 5, which has been there. So, Brahma himself is uh, what is the testimony or is the proof, uh, is, is making it is the authority. Uh, who else in this world can be an authority upon description of the spiritual world? So, there is a question, even if it is unmanifest in front into unto us, but Brahmaji's words, who's our um, uh, both as an. Uh, he is the ultimate personality in this material existence because he is the father of all living entities in that sense. At the same time, we come in the Brahma Madhva Sandra. So he is one of the Acharyas. So his words carry his weight. So all of us, it is good if you can. Uh, you get very very uh, a nice understanding uh, in, in very short time. If you read the Brahma Samhita and if you can recite and remember, that is glorious. Very nice. All aspects of Lord's inconceivable aspects Material world is, uh, what do you call it? Maya's description, Lord Shankara's position, and uh, uh, the annihilation, uh, how how Panchwasa of uh, Mahavishnu. So, all these aspects, these concepts come. Brahma Samhita, even the fifth chapter and these verses which have been given, was even what we recite during Abhishekam and all those things. If you just, just, just see the meaning of this, it's a beautiful description, so much faith giving, so much hope and so much faith giving that how beautifully our own, the Supreme Acharya, the, uh, our, uh, the beginner of our uh, Guru Parampara, hmm, Sampradaya Acharya, that is Brahmaji himself is describing about this uh, Goloka hmm, and the temperate instance of the metal world. It's been very beautifully described. So that's my humble request. If possible, try to... Hmm, Apart from reciting, see the meanings of this verse, and you will, as soon as you understand the meaning of Brahma Samhita, you would love to actually recite them. And, and when you are chanting them, then during uh, what do you call it? 
this abhishek or these things uh, our chanting will not uh, later remain as a part of uh, what do you call it smart brahmana chanting brahma samhita also it will be more become more absorbing and the darshan of the lord when abhishek is going on uh, it will be more absorbing all the holy name is also there at the same time there are devotees and if you see parallelly the absorption of we if we can be absorbed with the holy name very good and fine but apart from that there is brahma samhita parallelly going on that becomes very absorbing even one can also chant brahma samhita that is chanted by daily by the pujaris because every day the small duties are done the abhisheka that's what has come as charanagat for all this but uh, so brahma samhita has this that's why proper is quoting about the brahma samhita and there are other upanishads also describing about it so this is and third again he will bring back to the point 14 15 was talking about the ananya bhakta who get the supreme again he will bring that bhakti aspect hmm? only by bhakti one will reach to this uh, supreme abode hmm? and only by that ananya bhakta hmm? ananya bhakti and this one will reach it so that will be there purushaha sapara partha bhaktya labastu ananya ya see ಹಿಂದಿ Yeah. thank you so purusha sa para partha o oh, arjuna this purusha no? is para always the word uses para is used for superior supreme like that so this purusha is the lord the supreme lord is always uh, beyond the middle existence he is always the supreme uh, god ah uh, labhyas <clears throat> to ananya only by ananya bhakti only by bhakti uh, he can be achieved hmm? sulabha we saw that word sulabha very easily uh, one can attain at the same time here also and again that words are coming but how is easily attained uh, in whom everything exists yes santa stani bhutani yena sarva and at the same time he is pervaded with him this is inconceivable in him, in in whom everything is there at the same time he is pervaded uh, uh, like if you want to refer to that one way to see is that is how uh, what do you call how is inside everything and how everything is inside him like that this is inconceivable but a simple example what we can do is uh, a, a form of mahavishnu everything is inside him but as siro daksha vishnu as paramatma he is inside everything <laughs> this is how one can look into all the aspects also so ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಡೆಸ್ಟಿನೇಷನ್ ಫ್ರಮ್ ಹೀಸ್ ದೇರ್ ಈಸ್ ನೋ ರಿಟರ್ನ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಆಫ್ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ದ ಸುಪ್ರೀಂ ಪರ್ಸನ್ the brahma samhita describes this supreme abode as ananda chinmaya rasa a place where everything is full of spiritual bliss all the variegatedness manifest there is of the quality of spiritual bliss nothing there is material that variegatedness is the spiritual expansion of the supreme godhead himself the spiritual or superior energy described in the seventh chapter is also manifest there as far as this material world is concerned although the lord is always in his supreme abode he is he is nonetheless all pervading by his material energy so by his spiritual and material energies he is present everywhere both in the material and in the spiritual universe yashanta stani means that everything is sustained within him within either his spiritual or material energy The Lord is all pervading by these two energies. Yeah, this is another wonderful meaning. Mahaprabhu is saying that by spiritual energy, he is there in the spiritual, by his metal energy, and at the same time by his aspect of super soul. 
he's having. So by through his energies, actually he's pervading both the places. So, yeah. Please complete it. Winter Krishna Supreme Abode or the innumerable Vaikuntha planets is possible only by Bhakti. Devotional service, as clearly indicated here by the word Bhaktiya, no other process can help one attain that Supreme Abode. Yeah. Further reference about that is given by Prabhupada in the Gopal Tapani Upanishads, where it is also described Supreme Abode and the Supreme Personality Abode. Eko Vasi Sarvaga Krishna. In that abode, there is, you see, there's a very beautiful, I did not highlight it. The Gopal Tapani Upanishad. Mm -hmm. This is happening where it is saying that Eko Vasi hmm, Sarvaga Krishna. In that abode, there is only one Supreme Personality whose name is Krishna. In this metal world, everybody wants to have their own uh, their own supremacy. Hmm? Everybody wants to have that. But the Supreme God. Supreme God and everybody wants to serve the Lord. He is the supreme merciful deity. And although situated there as one, he has expanded himself into millions and millions of plenary expansions. Uh, the Vedas compare the Lord to a tree standing still, yet bearing many varieties of fruits, flowers and changing leaves. The plenary expansions of the Lord who preside over the Vaikuntha planets are four-handed and they are known by the variety of names. All of you know that Purushottama, Dilkrama, Keshava, Madhama, Dilkrama, Shikesha, Shankarsha. All these names. Yeah, please complete this. The Brahma Samhita 5.37 also confirms that although the Lord is always in the Supreme Abode, Golok Vrindavan, who is all pervading so that everything is going on nicely. Goloka Eva Nivasatya Klasma Puta. Stated in the Vedas, Shetaswata Upanishad 6.8, Parasya Shakti Vivida Eva Shuya, the Sahamitik Nana Golokya. His energies are so expensive that they systematically conduct everything in the cosmic manifestation without a flaw, although the Supreme Lord is far, far away. Yeah. That's how this uh, verse completes on this um, <coughs> comparison as between so 15 to 19 uh, so 15 verse talk Mahamavitya Punar Janma that that barely started and the 16th uh, 16th onwards this was the temporariness of the metal world is talked about hmm? 16 to 17 18 19 hmm? so the repeated birth and the destruction of the event, living entity under the control of karma we discussed. And then Mahamupetya, this coming to my board of Yakta and uh, Akshara, Paramambati, all these things we saw. The hint, so Prabhupada also writes the hint about the spiritual world because Krishna is speaking Gita. The elaboration of those hints is you will find in Bhagavatam. In Bhagavatam when Brahma Four Kumaras go into the spiritual planet. The whole description in, I think, third canto, 15th chapter describes, there is a direct description of the spiritual world. So one has to be very, uh, one should not think that uh, we only talk about spiritual world. We don't know what is happening in the spiritual world. No, the consciousness, uh, how the Vishuddha Sattva is there, uh, how the living entities attract, uh, how, the, how their bodies look like, and uh, what is their interaction going on. Uh, overall, who's the focus? All these things is described. If you go in thirty in third canto, fifteen chapter, all this wonderfully the spirit, the glimpse, uh, the window into the spiritual world, the Vaikuntha Lokas is being given. So, so one should never think that um, we don't have he, here Krishna is as I said, Krishna is talking in principle, so he's giving hint. He will not start describing to Arjuna about the spiritual world naturally. He is on the battlefield. He has to encourage him, but he's telling about the aspect, pointing out. So that's how mm -hmm. uh, so he clearly mentions in 20 uh, the temporariness of this and the spiritual world is described. 21 he describes about that uh, how he can be uh, can be achieved and only by Ananya Bhakti and how he's present internally next time. And now the last section 22 to 28. And that describes about the uh, remembrance by Bhakti Yoga is easier than Ashtanga Yoga. Basically, here now the question may be, so how do, how do um, the different kinds of 
processes or the paths or how do they reach to your spiritual uh, world or to different destinations. The paths are described here. Basically, two paths will be described. One is uh, Devyan, another is Pitriyan. These words are being used. So, two paths will be described in coming from 23 to 28. So, in that you will find and later it will be contrasted with the path of Ananya Bhakti, Shuddha Bhakti. Uh, this path is much more easier than the other two paths. Mm -hmm. Like somebody uh, wants to merge into the Brahman aspect. The Ashtanga yogis, all of us know that. Ashtanga yogis want to merge into Brahman. So the path will be, uh, Krishna is just hinting to the path, how the, uh, how by Devayan path, he tells about how um, these personalities, uh, one, who, one who wants to merge into the Brahman, how they are taken from this world to the uh, Brahman aspect. And uh, how the people, those who go to the Swarga Loka mm, by their pious activities, that is Pitriyan, uh, how they uh, go to the temporary uh, the heavenly planets, have their uh, pious credits exhausted and come back to this material uh, world. Sorry, come back to the uh, Bhu Loka or according to the this thing, in order to continue with their karma. So the exhaustless pious activities. So that thing will be talked from 23 to 28. And 28 verse, how bhakti is easy, that will be, and how one should not be uh, a devotee generally, not, doesn't get bewildered by these two paths. He just follows this. But Krishna makes a contrast and just tells about these two paths. That will be described from 23 to 28. It's 8 5. So I would like to stop here no. and continue tomorrow. Srimad Bhagavad Gita Ki Chai. Hare Krishna. So I open the, so any questions? <coughs> yes. Anil Sahu. Yeah. Oji, in the middle, uh, there is a discussion happened that you told that uh, we are coming from we are marginal energy and we are more compatible for the internal energy. So marginal energy means you have a combination of internal and uh, external energy. But when we return back to the spiritual what, what, abode, what, 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 what is your statement? Marginal, marginal energy, energy is a combination, means, of, combination, is a combination of, of like we combination can of is a combination of spiritual and material energy. Is that is it true? But we can go anywhere, na, Pooji, internal also or external also. Though both First options. you say marginal energy is a combination of material and spiritual. That thing you make it clear to me. This is your understanding. First you make it very clear. Marginal energy means what? It's a combination of material and spiritual energy. You tell me that first. Combination means, means that we can go anywhere. There also and here also. Uh. What is, what are you? Your Tatastha Shakti. So what are you in, in your exact, if you ask as a constitution, as a component, let me ask, as an ingredient also, what are you? Marginal energy. Ah, but what? Your combination of spiritual or material, your combination of uh, matter and spirit. Sachidananda. So what, where is it is, uh, uh, what do you call it? Uh, Sachidananda is towards which energy, if you see? Apuji, uh, come like, uh, soul is Sachidananda and uh, uh, hmm. external energy is matter. So body is like a matter. So your so body or matter? Uh, body is made of the material. Your nature. body or matter? Myself is the soul, okay? so Satchidana. Good. So Satchidana, right? You are neither body, you are neither matter. Very clear. Mm -hmm. Take it. So covering is there for material nature. No? Ah. So, but you are not combination of both. Don't say that. Combination happened, Pooji. Okay. Let me hear from others. What is others' opinion? Your combination of matter and uh, spirit. Uh, Pooji, uh... Soul by nature is a superior energy. So Krishna has described yes. in the uh, seventh chapter that there is inferior energy and superior energy. Exactly. So inferior energy are the uh, eight elements and superior energy has again two categories, which is the soul and the supreme energy. Exactly. And of that, the soul comes under the marginal energy because it has the tendency to either go into the superior energy or uh, come under the influence of the material energy. It is susceptible. 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 It. it is susceptible. Because susceptible that's yes. how he needs shelter. He need, he cannot be independent. So according, but his choice is there. According to his choice, if he takes to the marginal energy, ah, then marginal energy will give you the metal body. 
Similarly, spiritual energy, then accordingly one gets the spiritual body accordingly or whatever has been revealed accordingly. So is this point clear? And if so, who? So don't never uh, say, huh? use words precisely. Don't say that I am a combination of both. That means what are you referring to? We are superior energy. We are Satchidananda. But yes, we are not the Supreme Lord who is supremely Satchidananda in that sense. We are Anu. That's why why we are defined Anu. We are small. That's why we are susceptible. The example in the Shastra is given fire. Fire. And then there is spark of fire. It has a nature, isn't it? but yes, it is susceptible. If it goes out of the fire, it can become exhausted. In the sense, there the fire becomes complete. The analogy is just for understanding. Again, don't ask. It goes out, then it becomes matter. No, it never becomes matter. Soul never becomes matter. But it can take that. So, that is the question. Is that point clear? Yeah, but this point is clear. Huh? Make it. Yeah, have that clear. And all others also. Please never, never say. When you are using word, don't use. We are two. Otherwise, all the whole uh, Siddhanta will be uh, gone. Okay. So, my question in this project that because we are marginal energy, that the reason we are allowed to go eternal abode also and external abode also. Well, external energy also, internal energy also. Or because you told that we are permanently marginal energy, we cannot become internal energy and we cannot become totally external energy. If you will be metal energy, you will not be talking to me. Metal energy means. Uh, you will not be talking to me because you will not be conscious, right? Hmm. So, what's the question? So, the, we are marginal energy. That the reason we are allowed to go to the internal abode of the Lord. Is that is the reason? Otherwise, material what nature is, cannot. What go. is the what is the natural constitution position of the soul part and parcel of Krishna? What is the constitution position of the living entity? Uh, part and parcel of the Lord. So, where will be he in harmonious or eternal? Uh, where will be his harmony lies? When with the Lord or with the metal energy? Tell me that. With the Lord. With the Lord, right? So, if you do not want to choose the Lord, you can continue in the metal world and that's why we can use a word called Nitya Baddha. You can continue in the metal world. If you wish to, you choose to continue here. We can choose. No problem. That, that's why the word Nitya Bhatta is used. But want to change your vector with that magnitude to serve the Lord rather than enjoying for oneself. One to the spiritual world. And when he goes, seeing that, uh, what do you call? His, uh, what do you call? He will never, never have a, what do you call? A desire to come back. Why will we ever have? Is it clear? Yes, sir. Okay. Anything but, else? Puji, in this, my question is this point uh, that uh, B will never become internal energy. No? Internal energy. Why will he become internal energy? Even we will reach to the. We will, we will enter, we will, we, will, we will go into the internal energy of the aspect and be a part of internal energy. But you will remain a, this only, no? Marginal. Marginal, right? No, okay, understand. Why there is the word called Nitya Siddha then? Is it not? Somebody practices here, he calls Nitya Siddha. Nitya Siddha one Nitya Siddha understand. Oh, sorry, one Nitya Siddha is always there in the spiritual world. And somebody is practicing sadhana, practicing continuing, and become sadhana siddha. And they become into the body. And they become a part of that family. Sorry, again, I confused. What is your confusion? Are you telling Nitya Siddha is Puji Bajra? So, Nitya Siddha is eternally present in the spiritual in the spiritual world. They are eternal devotees of the Lord. He is eternal energy, no? Puji, internal energy. Nitya it's part of internal energy. Okay. So we will never become Nitya Siddha, no? Puji. If you how you will become? You are where are you now? Marginal energy. Nitya Siddha is from right from beginning, which is a, there is nothing actually for the uh, for there is nothing called beginning. Let us say, from I'm just putting a temporary this thing. Eternally, they are there only. And as we said, if the desire, as we said, falling from the spiritual, that that understanding is there. Yeah, if you have independent desire, then we come back, right? 
then you become then you come to nidya padda aspect of these things is there getting yes sir maybe you contemplate a little more of what i said okay yeah thank you if i wrong is i yes you will get the facility lord has created another world for us and so yes he will give the facility to enjoy purify your desires go back and once you have seen the material world uh, so ferocious and this experience why will you ever want to come back bhagavad gita vidya bhushan says anavritti ashtha anavritti shabdhat and there is no returning back uh, as a th thorough experience of the material world i want to like to come वो जी मतलब मार्जिनल एनर्जी है ओनली ऑप्शन टू कम टू दिस लाइक वी डू सम लॉन्ग एक्टिविटी देन ही कम टू द मटेरियल वर्ल्ड बट इंटरनल पर्सन इंटरनल एनर्जी नेवर हैव कम टू दिस मटेरियल वर्ल्ड राइट सो बिकॉज वी आर ऑलवेज इंटरनल मार्जिनल सो वी हैव द ओनली चांस टू कम टू मटेरियल वर्ल्ड एंड वी विल नेवर बिकम द इंटरनल सो वी आर ऑलवेज इनटू द मटेरियल स्टेट ना बोलिए यू विल यू विल गो टू द इंटरनल यू विल बिकम अ पार्ट ऑफ इंटरनल एनर्जी ऑफ द लॉर्ड because your nature is in, in in harmony with the supreme lord sachidananda you are also sachidananda that one has to understand but don't think that what do you call you will become fused or something like that in the spiritual existence otherwise it will go into the brahma brahman aspect kind of thing you will get a spiritual body simple or in in other understanding what we say is we have a spiritual body but it is currently covered whatever you say okay understand okay. thank you thank you shantar guru hari krishna guru uh, pro ji uh, in one of the purports where uh, brahma ji's 1000 uh, yugas that thing was mentioned it was mentioned that uh, all the souls are uh, resting in the uh, body of vishnu uh, during the time when brahma is sleeping so this is referring to mahavishnu or the kshira no, garbhadasha vishnu because Garbhata. when when things are happening in the universe prabhu all the day and all that aspects of brahma ji is coming every day taking birth i'm uh, um, not birth uh, taking a uh, what do you call is waking Rest. up everything that happens in the garbhadasha vishnu aspect and what you are telling along with uh, brahma ji along with the whole universe they were everything whole creation is stopped only material material energy herself is in state of pradhan pradhan is Rest. like completely and and this thing so that is referring to the end of brahma's life that is pralaya hmm? ah, that is that is that, that pralaya prakrit pralaya what we call it is prakrit pralaya there are four kind of annihilations what you call constant annihilation of one's own body in the day of uh, brahma that's why in the day of brahma there is annihilation life of brahma there is annihilation and ultimate liberation of the living entity from the material existence that is atyantik this is this is four uh, kind of uh, what do you call annihilations are exp um, explained in the 11th canto of uh, shrimad bhagavatam you will find that there is uh, nitya there is uh, no, what do you call brahma's day and there is uh, prakrita and there is uh, atyant yes okay okay yeah. nitya naimitya sorry nitya naimitya guys naimitya is brahma's day nitya is constant uh, like we are in the metal world our bodies is constant uh, uh what do you call constant annihilation we know that moment after moment it is annihilation there is uh, naimitya that is brahma's day every day brahma's night uh, i am referring to and there is uh, prakrita brahma's life and there is atyantika there is uh, that is the annihilation or the ultimate liberation of the living entity from the material existence that is the final annihilation so annihilation of the body basically he enters into special world understanding that is an atom is an question is that okay then, yeah then proji uh, some annihilation also happens between a manvantara right uh, yeah that is that has been referred but that is not as as bigger as what the what do you call brahmaji's day or what this partial annihilation partial because, annihilation because if that happens annihilation again there will be creation mm -hmm. it's a partial annihilation of the manu spirit yeah it is small right, right. and after every yuga also some uh, annihilation happens oh uh, yuga just... i have not after every uh, yuga i have not heard you see after every manvantra of 71 yuga cycles there is some 
some say yes so when a boat go down and go under water something like that happens yeah, that happens on a brahma's day actually all the planetary systems that happens on brahma's day how much annihilation exactly happens during a prabhu or during a manvantara period that is difficult to say at least i have not read it how much deep how much till what point it happened but yes if you see from uh, when when the maru period change only thing we, we have is uh when our uh, top three what we call hmm no our uh, you know that is there but i'm talking about when our uh, manu change was there when this uh, um, fish incarnation has come yakshasha has come yakshasha uh, that has been described in bhagavatam and then the lord said okay you take the seeds of different species and keep it with you and there is a change of manu so that is a partial uh, partial but how much partial that has been known there is brahma ji that has been described till what point usually the annihilation happens and uh, whereas in uh, at least man mantra i have not heard what is exactly how much is exactly what point it takes but yes there is partial annihilation that we that has been the opinion of uh, some acharyas okay okay please. but whether it happens again at every manu period i am not sure so some has the opinion that it happens some has the opinion that maybe not but yes partial there is there some some say that So from that point of view, because that is seen from this past time of Chakshusha Manus ending and converting into new Manu coming there, the king himself become, I think it's Satya Patnoni who becomes yeah. the next. Satya um, Patraja. Clear, Prabhu? Yes, Prabhu. Okay. Yes, Mandar. Yeah, you are not audible. I'm sorry. Maybe you can type if you want. I'm not sure. Is there anything in the chat? Okay. Chat Himan Shri Guru. Why unmanifest nature at spiritual world said? Why not said manifest nature at spiritual world? Oh, this I already told you because it is um, from from material point of view. Where is spiritual world manifest to you? Are you able to see from here? Whereas material, whereas material nature is all around you, it is manifested in front of you. You want to speak of even this material nature when Brahma Ji is ending, we ourselves will not be a part of. So that time also it will be unmanifest. The material unmanifestation only one is not one doesn't have access to. Then there is a question of spiritual world manifestation. Unmanifest in the sense not here unmanifest means not that spiritual world. Also, like a material world, like in Brahma Ji's days, all these planetary systems go under water. Something happens to unmanifest in the sense it is not in the terms of not visible to us, not accessible to us. That is the meaning. Please do not take it literally. Like like Brahma Ji's day, uh, literally the uh, material universe, the planetary systems go into water. The living entities are not having their bodies. There is no scope of life running. Anything is going on for twelve hours of Brahma's period when he is at rest. That doesn't happen with the spiritual world. Unmanifest is in the sense of is not access to us. That is the meaning. Anil Sawar Krishna, as we are not. Same question. I think we have already discussed this. Uh, I had some doubt. Okay, I mean, I don't know that nature is that only manifested, but in which context is it? Hopefully, I don't know. There is Mandar. Uh, you heard it. Okay, shall we stop? Shall we do any more questions? Yeah. Okay, Prabhuji. So we'll continue tomorrow. With respect to you. Thank you very much. Shall we go back? Yeah. Shall we go back? Yeah. Hare Krishna. Hare Krishna.